Today, we are going to look at an overview of using SAS Studio with SAS Grid Manager. SAS Studio is the latest and coolest interface to SAS software. As such, we want to use it in most situations, including sites that leverage SAS Grid Manager. I'm Eduardo Riva with SAS, and this is the Technical Insights and Expertise series. Let's start with a quick introduction to SAS Studio. SAS Studio is a web application for SAS developers that you access through your web browser. When you run a program or task, SAS Studio processes the code on a SAS server. The SAS server can be hosted in a cloud environment, a server within your company firewall, or SAS installed on your local machine, or even a server in a grid environment. After the code is processed, the results are returned to SAS Studio in your browser. So, what benefits can provide a grid environment? SAS Grid Manager provides a modern, flexible infrastructure which turbocharges SAS performance with distributed and parallel computing techniques, all under the automatic monitoring and orchestration of a grid controller. SAS Grid Manager lets you balance workloads. It gives you faster parallelized processing, high availability and enterprise scheduling, all in a flexible and centrally managed grid computing environment. Today, we will concentrate on three features showing how SAS Studio can take advantage of workload balancing and parallel computing while making use of grid central management capabilities. After this brief introduction, let's answer our key question. How does SAS Studio use the grid? SAS Studio comes in different editions. SAS Studio Single User, SAS Studio Basic, and SAS Studio Enterprise. In order to run code from any edition of SAS Studio on the grid, you must have SAS Grid Manager licensed on the same machine as the SAS Studio workspace server. With all editions of SAS Studio, you can use in your code any of the functions included with SAS Grid Manager license to send the code to the grid. You can start multiple sessions in parallel to run your code faster and get results quickly. If you are using SAS Studio Enterprise Edition together with SAS Grid Manager, you can convert the SAS Studio workspace server to use grid load balancing. This way, the grid control server will automatically start new server sessions on the best available grid node. I will now show you this last user case. Let's open SAS Studio and sign in using the SAS demo account. We have to wait a few seconds. Here we are. Now SAS Studio is started, so let's have a look at our grid. We can open the SAS Grid Manager module for SAS Environment Manager. We select Monitoring and select Jobs. We use the filter to display only the running jobs. We can see that we have two jobs running inside our grid. They are started by SAS Demo as expected, and they are load balanced across two different machines. In this case, SAS Server 03 and SAS Server 04. If we expand the name column, we get a confirmation that the sessions are started by SAS Studio. On a side note, we have two sessions because one is used to run the user code, while the other is used for file I.O. operations. From another machine, let's open another SAS Studio session using a different account. In the SAS Grid Manager module for SAS Environment Manager, we can see the two new sessions owned by LSF Admin. These sessions are started on the list loaded servers. As you can see, we have not yet written a single line of code and we are already leveraging our grid. Talking about code, I want to show you how simple it is to get similar monitoring information from SAS Studio. Let's open a very simple code to print a table listing. Note the footnote statement. It includes variables that report the desired details. After we run the code, we can see in the results window how we are able to know on which grid node the code runs, as well as get some server process information. So, in summary, having SAS Grid Manager, we can leverage grid launch workspace servers, and all the workload is automatically distributed without even requiring a single line of code. Now, let me show you some more possibilities. What about parallelization? How to split code to run across multiple nodes so that the overall runtime can be dramatically reduced? I will not bother you with all the theory that's available in the online documentation. Instead, I will show you live how to transform a SAS program into parallel processing in four steps. We will start with a very simple program. Let's open Grid Demo 2 with SAS Studio. 
we can see that there are a couple of data steps and procs which process different subsets of the input data. We can recognize that the two data steps are mutually independent, so this code is a good candidate for parallelization. We can proceed with step number two, add the required grid enabling statements. We add the pieces of code that we need to enable grid. Start the two remote sessions and submit the code to these sessions. Finally, there are some control statements and the command to close the remote sessions. The final result is that the green data step runs in a grid session, while the blue one runs in parallel in another one. A key point here is the wait equal no option on the rsubmit statement to enable a synchronous remote code submission. All of the rest of the code keeps running in the original parent workspace session. We are ready to submit the code. But it doesn't work. SAS Studio log window reports that there are two similar errors. It seems some files have gone missing. This brings us to step number three, adjust the code to make it work. First, we have to understand why it's failing. And the reason is really simple. The two grid sessions are writing the output datasets in their own work libraries, which are local to each session and point to a different location than the work library of the parent session. The parent session is trying to read the data from a directory that is not the one where it was written. The solution is quite simple. We have to use a common area, such as a shared library. Now, all sessions are reading and writing in a consistent place. So, Back to SASstudio, let's open the grid demo 03 program. It is similar to the previous one, but it uses a shared library named mylib instead of the default work. Let's run the code again. This time, when it completes, we can see that it actually succeeds and produces the desired reports. We are finally at step number four, add a bit of fanciness. Now that we have a working parallel code example, we can make it better. For example, we can use macro variables to give a name to our parallel sessions so that they are easier to monitor. Or we can specify grid option sets to schedule our jobs according to policies configured by the grid administrator. While the latest release of our code is running, we can switch to the SAS Grid Manager module for SAS Environment Manager to check the results of what we changed. Now, the table that lists all the jobs clearly identifies our two parallel sessions, while the previous ones had generic names, such as sasgrid colon followed by a number. We can also see that the two jobs are using a queue called sasstudio, just like the parent workspace server sessions. This comes from specifying the correct grid option set in our code. This is all for now. We have seen a brief introduction to sasstudio and sasgrid manager. Then I showed you how Grid load balances multiple sessions across different nodes. Finally, we worked through four simple steps to leverage parallel code execution. Hopefully, this has given you a good overview of how to harness the power of SAS Grid Manager using SAS Studio. For more information on using SAS Studio with SAS Grid Manager, see the Grid Computing in SAS 9.4 guide linked below. You can also watch additional YouTube videos such as SAS Grid Computing Overview or Working in SAS Studio. Thank you for viewing this video and check back with your global enablement and learning team for more technical insights.